Hello everyone. I am here with the, um, oh, I need to adjust this light. It's kind of in my eyes. Can I do that? Hold on. Oh, okay. How's that? Better? Okay. Sorry about that. So I'm here with the six pack collab or also called, uh, the journal collaboration where there are six journal artists and we are each doing kind of a round robin make where we make a cover and pass it on and then we're going to do the signatures sew it in and pass it on so eventually <coughs> excuse me we'll each have had a hand in making six journals so this is the cover that was sent to me i'll leave all the links of all the artists in the description box below and i just love this this um this cover. Let me show you. This is um, got some resin in here, in, and this says create a story, and it's got these gorgeous swirly silver and gold um, papers on the inside, and it's got silver and blues and some lavender colors in here, and here's a little um, piece of paper that we each, uh, each journal is going to have a little bit of um information about our contribution and you can see this was originally made made by apg jamie hi um so i just love this cover so here we go and i'm going to i have put the signatures together and i'm going to sew them in but let me show you the the signatures so far um and decided that I'm going to sew right through the spine which I was struggling with I couldn't decide what to do but I also didn't want to cover up any of these end papers by doing a hidden spine so we're going to sew right through the spine so I have three signatures I used a Stamperia Cosmos uh paper packs and each of these signatures has about 10 pages and I used some tracing paper and I used bubble printing. Um, there are lots of videos on bubble printing. So for this bubble printing, I used one layer of coffee and then I let it dry. And then I did a second layer of um, distress ink. And I also added a little bit of, um, where is it? The uh, Lindsay's Magical Shimmers. Let me find the one that I used. Of course, I can't now. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, here. This. Lindsay's Magical Shakes uh, and Time Travel Teal. So that combined with the Distress Paint in uh, uh, Uncharted Mariner gave the blue so you put your inks in a mug with soap and you bubble it oh and then I also sprayed some distress mica on here as well so there is a little bit of shimmer and the the different signatures are all very similar in terms of content there's some uh, different copy papers this is a card stock they each have a little bit of map in there oh that one's upside down um, and then some tracing paper and an envelope of some sort. This particular envelope, I sewed two together. Uh, this, they're two different envelopes. This one I had to cut down and re -sew. but they've all been, oops, bubble, bubble printed. So I guess I really should go through all the signatures just to check them. So that has like a little up tuck in it right there. I suppose I could do it this way and it would be like a, a that way tuck. Does that work? Yeah, that works. We'll do it that way. Okay, so that's going to be signature number one. Signature number two. Oh, and I also used some Inca gold, or in this case, the silver type of Inca gold on the edges. This one has a little tuck that way. Just make sure everything is going the right way. And some grid paper. There's the cardstock in this one. 
The bubble printing is so fun. I just, and it's so great. You can really layer it. I tried doing some gold um, acrylic paint, but it didn't take. So this is just a really simple envelope one. So whoever gets this next, it was very hard. Part of the deal is that we're supposed to not embellish these. We're just supposed to be doing the signatures. So like it was very hard to refrain from sewing things to the edge and stamping and doing other things. So this tuck is, there was this kind of circular piece in the Stamperia paper that I cut out and used as a tuck. Um, and for these, this is a Jibid Miri inspired uh, technique where you ink, take your inked tracing paper and you just sew along a diagonal. You lay them on top of each other. And then on this side, I tore off the cardstock. And then on this side, I tore off the, um, the tracing paper. So you have this kind of very interesting Frankeny paper. And for the sewing I have on my bobbin, I have a metallic thread. And in my, I'm sorry, on my spool, I have a metallic thread. And then on my bobbin, I had like this aqua thread. So it comes out really nice. This works really well for anything ocean or mermaid, or you can use greens. The green inks work beautifully for like foresty or woodland or nature themed journals. Um, so that's a Jibineri inspired um, technique. And I'll link that below as well. And I just love how the me metallic thread just gives just the, a little bit of, of shimmer and shine to it. Okay, so and that's, those are the threads I use to sew around the outside of the signature covers as well. This one has a little bit of um, not vintage, just from Staples ledger. <laughs> this envelope is, this is the envelope and I just sewed a little extra piece of cardstock to the flap to create an interesting page. And there's the tracing paper and the map. And oh, and this one also had uh, from from the the pieces that I tore off to make the Franken paper, I reassembled to make yet a different type of Franken paper. And this isn't this isn't pocketed or anything. It's just just pretty. It's just re-sewn together, all the pieces re-sewn and kind of made to fit. So that is the third signature. So this is, these are all pretty small. They're not, there isn't going to be a lot of, a lot to hold in there. So I think a three hole pamphlet stitch will be perfectly adequate for these. So I'm going to make a template and I'm going to use my Japanese punch tool to, and I left all the threads hanging off. I like the way that looks, but you know, the next person may decide that they don't want that. But I kind of like that, especially since they're kind of shimmery and sparkly. All right, so to my do my um, grid, the first thing I'm going to do is I need to make a template that is this size. So I am just going to and I want it to only go to the edges of the M papers because that is how I sized the journal uh, inserts. So I'm just going to mark, it needs to be that tall and maybe get that lined up and like that wide. And I want it to be inside the seams so it's not crashing up against the seams any of the signatures so i will cut this out okay and then I'm very bad at cutting straight. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Shabby Dabby Duda, but she is amazing with scissors and cutting straight. I just, it's, it boggles my mind. All right, let's check the size of this against my spine. Yep, that looks good to me. 
Okay, so now this is pretty straightforward the way I do it. I'm going to fold it in half to get my center line. And on these things, I'm actually usually better at folding them than using my scoreboard. I seem, when I use my scoreboard, I always seem to get it off just by a smidge. Okay, so now I will just fold each of these edges towards the center to get my my first seam. I'm going to fold that again and just make sure it's really good and creased so that I can see it. I'm going to fold this edge towards the center and that way all of my signatures will be evenly spaced across the spine. And then to get my, um, my hole placements, I can fold it in half and fold each one of these towards the center and I will get three evenly spaced um, signature placements. Now you don't have to have them evenly spaced. You can actually decide that you want your hole for the top, for the top to be higher. And I actually might do that because sometimes if you, you go this low, on um, the top hole, it's the top bit might come a little bit loose. So I actually might do it a little bit higher, like up here, I think. There's one and two. Okay, so let me mark these. So here is going to be where the lines cross will be one hole two holes, three holes, that's the top row. And where they, they cross here is going to be one, two, just make sure I have that in the right place. And then down here, I want it here. I want it here and I want it here. Okay, so checking my, each of my dots should fall on one of those coordinate axes kind of things. Okay, so that is my template. Let me just check it against here. Does that look like it will be a good, yes, I would say that does look like a good placement because it's high enough so that it's not, this top bit will be secured, anything in the middle will be secured and anything towards the bottom will be secured. I'm happy with that. Okay, so now let us make hold of this cover. I have actually been procrastinating doing this because it is nerve wracking. Um, so I should just make sure I have labeled the top, the top, so I get, don't get it turned around, which I have done before. And I'm going to, no, I don't want that. That is not working for me. It's too, too bumpy. All right, I have these. I'll just clip this with this. Will this be big enough? That won't be big enough. This is going to be too big as well. No, I'm, I'm okay with that. That will be okay as long as I get it straight. <clears throat> okay. So then I'll do another one on the bottom. Excuse my reach. Do another one on the bottom and it will be even. Okay. All right. I think this is going to look good. So I have um, a Japanese drill punch. Got this off Amazon. It comes with different hole sizes. 
and I have the smallest one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a hole in the spine at each of these points. Now I do have the crocodile big bite. And that would absolutely be able to handle this thickness. But I find that with um, with with this just allows me to use the grid and see exactly where I just find it's easier for me to see, I guess, with this than with the crocodile big bite. Okay, we have holes. Oh, did not go through. Fascinating. All right. Let me get see if I can get the um there we go. Uh, I need something pokey. Get the, there we go. So I just cleared that piece out of all the past years of, of um, paper guts. So we'll just go in there and do another layer. I suppose I could go in and use that big bite now that I have the placement. If I need to, I may do that, but I'm just gonna see if this will work because it is a nice heavy duty spine. Did that go through? Not really. All right, so here we go. Here comes the big bite. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Did I just mess this up? Okay, so I'm gonna put this on the tiny, the smallest punching, the smaller of the punching things and position it. where the hole is, oh gosh. One. Oh my goodness. It is not wanting to go through. It's stuck. Oh, metal, that's why. Not designed to go through metal. Two. Three. I really want to line it up exactly. One. Okay, and then finally the bottom one. And Two, that's one, three, phew, okay, there we go, we got through. 
all those layers. Okay, so now let's do our signatures. I'm gonna, I am going to use the Japanese thingy madiggy again on these. Let's go back to front. So here's the back one and the center and everything is lined up and this I will clamp off. I have not entirely decided what color I'm gonna, thread I'm gonna use. I have to decide that, but I'm gonna do that at the end. Okay, so now I will unattach my grid and this is my top and I'm going to take my back holes and get them really in there, but good. Maybe I'll do these both on the same side. Okay. Um, and here we go. One, two, not go through. That is so strange. I don't know why I'm having trouble with this. I've never had trouble with this going through before. I wonder if it's gotten dull. I really like doing it with this rather than just the pokey tool um, because it makes a good size hole. There we go. Um, that's easy to get the thing through. Okay, so now, before I sew this in, we have to decide on a color. So help me out here. I have purple, which I really like. I have this steely gray, which blends in well, I think. And then I have this blue. tangled. So blue, that blue is pretty. The gray blends in and then the purple is a nice kind of a coordinating color and there is some purple on the inside. There's some purple on the cover. I'm gonna go with the purple just because it has a slightly kind of magical feel to it. Mystical magical. So if you're on the on the on the design team for this, tell me which one you would have picked. <laughs> Not I won't feel bad. I'm just curious because that's one of the interesting things about this collaboration is or if even if you're not on the design team. Anybody, tell me which one you would have picked. Because it's just interesting, that, you know, that people are so different and 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 that and have different takes on the same materials, which is one of the things that makes this such an interesting collaboration. Okay, and I need a uh, what are these called? Needles. And I'm sure you've just done, I've always done a three-hole pamphlet stitch. So I'm just going to do the same process with all of them. And you know what? I'll pause and come back and show you the final product. Ta-da! I'm back. And I've got all my signatures sewn in. I've left all of the strings long because that's the next person's job. There, look how perfectly it turns out. And everything always turns out perfectly aligned when you do it this way. I just, it's very nice. I like that. And I did take some uncharted mariner and I kind of went around the holes to kind of de-emphasize the white of the 
punching. And here we are. Here is signature one, which we kind of went through. And you see, there's a good amount of room on either side of each of these signatures um, for for room for embellishing. It's it's there are three signatures. Each one has ten sheets. So what is that? Um, ten sheets would be forty forty sides. Yeah, and times three is 120 sides. So there is plenty of space for pockets and tucks and embellishments. And there we go. So all I have to do now is fill in my name and my contribution to here. I actually, you know what? I have my shop stamp. So my Etsy store is Oceanodroma Journals. Oceanodroma is the genus name for the um, little seabird that my husband and I were studying when we met. They've changed it since, but it hasn't changed for me. So I will put my little Oceanodroma Stamp. This stamp was made by the Etsy store Signet Stamps when I got the rest of the, um, you know, the set for the label stamps. So I'm going to put this, oh, it'll fit perfectly right here. There we go. So the link to my Etsy store, if you want to check it out, is... Um, on the banner, I'll put it in the box below, but it's also on the banner of my YouTube channel's homepage. There's a little in the, if you look at the banner, which is like a, a little journal cover with a cute little harvest mouse on some green background. And in the corner there, there's a little link to the Etsy store. And, um, and yeah, so I just have to write a note here. Does this work? Here we go. I will sign it. And I will write um, signatures. Our Stamperia Cosmos um, Bubble dyed papers, envelopes, and distress inked tracing paper. There we go. That is my contribution. And I thank you all for watching. Thank you all to all of my new subscribers. I really appreciate it. I'm so trying to hit a thousand. So if you're here and you liked any of this, please consider clicking like and subscribe and help me hit a thousand. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye-bye.